שלום ואהבו עליכום. הורנותה של הספרתה, Harmony of the Spheres, tuning back in. And we have here today a very, very special video. And we're going to be introducing a very special guest in a little bit. But for now, I just wanted to say that we are here with the Chief Magician of Mystery Babylon and our friend Michael here, who is going to be revealing some very, very high mysteries. And so with that being said, I'll introduce Rava. And then Rava could introduce uh, Mikal. Yes, uh, yes. Hello, everyone. I'm the Chief Magician of Mystery Babylon, and welcome, everyone. And uh, we have uh, a real special holy companion with us today. Um, uh, he is uh, a true Egyptian master Mechabel and Kabbalist, and uh, have a lot of high respect for him. Um, you know, I've been in contact with him for a while. Uh, you know. He's a course. He was a course subscriber to my channel, and uh, gotten to know him, you know, for a while now. And you know, he's he's a self-taught Mechabel, and despite the fact that he's a self-taught Mechabel, he displays um, signs of ridiculous high initiation, which is most impressive, uh, especially given that he's an Egyptian, you know, Mechabel, right? And we know that Egypt is a very oppressive Islamic country. That doesn't allow a lot of Hebrew and Jewish material to enter into that country, so that he could get this highly initiated on his own in an oppressive Islamic country is most ridiculously impressive, to say the least. And he is extremely highly initiated. Uh, I definitely uh, would consider him a true uh, master of Israel. And so, uh, without further ado, I want to present Michael. And Michael, if you can just briefly introduce yourself. Uh, to the audience, you know, that would be great. You know, give you a few minutes to introduce yourself. Okay, shalom everyone. Uh, my name is Michael. Uh, as the chief says, uh, Michael is my Hebrew name. Uh, and I love it so much. I love the way uh, he introduced me and uh, I love the way he pronounces my name, Michael. Uh, I am a Coptic Christian, uh, traditionally Orthodox. Uh, my church have been there in Egypt uh, around 2,000 years now. Uh, I am uh, around 30 years old. Uh, I just uh, got introduced to Kabbalah generally around three years ago. I was reading uh, Paul, uh, Apostle Paul, and I read about the Bliroma. Uh, when he said that uh, all the Bliroma abides in Jesus. Uh, so I checked the uh, technical term Bliroma and it uh, traced back to the Sphirot, the concept of Sphirot. And I searched that and I uh, got stumbled across the channel of Chief and uh, his public teachings uh, initiated me on the path, uh, really. Uh, and I have been uh, studying Kabbalah uh, since, uh, since that moment. Uh, it has been fascinating and uh, God revealed to me a lot and a lot of fascinating revelations. Uh, I now understand my tradition, my Coptic tradition, uh, more uh, deeply and more fully than I did before. Uh, my tradition uh, uh, is already rooted uh, in uh, Hebrew and Jewish tradition, but I did not uh, fully realize the depth of it uh, until I came across uh, Kabbalah in general. Well, Baruch Hashem, Michael, that, that is so awesome and amazing to hear. And, um, you know, uh, what, I, what, what is really powerful here is that, you know, one of the, one of the problems that we have uh, with Western Christianity is the tremendous ignorance of just the original um, Greek text of the New Testament, right? If you were fluent in Greek and you read the, the, the original Greek, if you read the New Testament in the original Greek, especially the writings of Shaul, you will duly notice that many, many Gnostic terms are in, some of the, are in some of the books of the New Testament, right? And scholars, there are scholars that have written about this. And, and to me, it's like, why, why aren't the scholars, you know, making a huge deal of this? That there, there, there are very technical Christian Gnostic terms scattered throughout the New Testament, especially in the writings of Shaul. 
which is one of the highest proofs and seals that Shaul was a highly initiated Gnostic. Now, I've, I've recently published Sefer Bakan Eden, and in that book, um, I reveal proofs and seals that Shaul's a Gnostic. But really, in the in the book, it's really in the in the in the book that I'm about to publish very soon in the next month or so, where I reveal the highest, most explicit proofs and seals that Shaul was a full-blown Gnostic. You know, and the, the that word pleroma is a fully charged Christian Gnostic term. You know. And so that's that's really brilliant and genius, Michael. I'm so impressed with you. I mean, you know, you you also have a very very high intellect and a very high spiritual quotient, Michael. Is is what I have duly noted about you, which is very very impressive. You know that you were able to catch on to this. You know, so this is very very powerful, uh, very momentous to understand. Now, I was hoping, Michael, that maybe if you could speak uh, to some of the differences between you know Eastern Coptic Christianity and Western, you know, Christianity. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, Western Christianity, uh, I, I call it Western Christianity, is really not Christianity. They are, um, there are many, many uh, Christianities out there. Uh, Orthodox Christianity uh, is traditionally uh, the first form uh, uh, Egypt and uh, basically the whole East had uh, after uh, Jesus' ascension, you know, uh, but uh, uh, as a big and uh, basic difference, you can say the, that uh, Orthodox Christianity in general uh, have a written tradition, which is the Old Testament or the Tanakh and the New Testament, and uh, like you call it in Hebrew, Torah uh, Sheba al you know, we have our own oral tradition concerning theology and concerning how we uh, uh, conduct our, ourselves uh, in life and uh, how we worship, uh, how we pray to God. Uh, we have all those, uh, especially uh, the Mass, uh, the Holy Mass. We received our uh, tradition of the Mass uh, from uh, Apostle Mark, uh, uh, John Mark. Uh, he was a student and a disciple of Christ, uh, but you can say that uh, Western Christianity uh, received uh, uh, the main tradition from uh, Paul and from Peter, but uh, Protestantism had, uh, through all this, all that uh, big spiritual tradition, either uh, of the East or the West, uh, basically uh, into garbage, you know. Uh, so uh, the big difference would be that we have our own oral tradition, we have uh, our own way of prayer uh, that we received it uh, from uh, Apostle John Mark. Uh, we have uh, what is generally known as the seven sacraments or the seven mysteries. Uh, the most uh, known of them is uh, Eucharist, Baptism and Chrismation. Uh, generally, yeah. Protestants doesn't don't have that. Yeah, this is uh, this is all very very interesting. You know, um, you know, uh, learning you know about these core differences. You know, um, you know, uh, having you know at least for myself uh, and many you know Americans and Westerners having never had any exposure uh, to the Eastern rites and traditions. Uh, you know, we don't really know much about it, you know, we're very ignorant, you know, and, and I'll admit myself that I myself am quite ignorant uh, on the Eastern, especially the Coptic um, tradition, and I, I find it very interesting, um, even more interesting that, you know, um, and as should be well known, right, that you're carrying on, you know, as you said, you know, you belong to a church that has, that that, that traces its roots 2,000 years to the very beginning, right, that yes. in of itself is extremely powerful, you know, and there's a lot of uh there's a lot of things that come with that like like a very core powerful oral tradition that you can trace you know 2000 years all the way back to yeshua and his disciples you know and you know the yes. western you know western christian church you know can't claim that they can't say that you know they're very ignorant you know they're uh, they they're really detached you know in many ways um it's it's really really sad you know um, so mm -hmm. how would you how would you rank overall the 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 spiritual uh, an intellectual level of the Coptic Christians, you know, as compared to Western Christians, would you say that Coptic Christians are maybe more initiated than Western Christians 
generally speaking, more knowledgeable, you know, would you say? Or, uh, or would you say or would you say that they're just as stupid and ignorant as Western Christians overall? Uh, okay, uh, let me tell you a thing first. Uh, I said that my uh, tradition, my Christian tradition is around 2,000 years old, but uh, the method uh, I was taught to interpret the Torah and the Tanakh and the New Testament uh, was actually inherited from uh, the Therabutai group uh, that lived in Egypt and from Philo. So you can say that uh, our spiritual legacy is uh, more than 2,000 years old, you know, uh, around 3,000 years old, you can say that. But uh, on the other hand, uh, the current situation is totally different. Uh, I can tell you that I'm a lone wolf on the Kapalistic path. Um, most uh, of my peers uh, and my uh, fellow Christians here are no different from Western Christians, uh, except for uh, a handful that just go the beyond the level of uh, Peshat interpretation and hold to the Remez and the Derosh, you know. Uh, they can interpret the Old Testament and the New Testament uh, in, uh, on a symbolic level and they can uh, deduct uh, a whole theology and a whole uh, spirituality out of there. But uh, when I talk to someone about Sefirot or Kabbalah or uh, such things, you know, uh, they call me crazy or just uh, I see men who have uh, dropping jaws, you know, uh, yeah. totally think, ignorant. So what sure. I think. I, yeah, that's really sad to hear. So what, what we're seeing, you know, what we've been witnessing in this last generation is, is an overall a very powerful major decline. In, in Christianity, um, in, 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 in Christian spirituality, um, etc. It's just a sign that we're in the end times, you know. And I think that part of the reason, and I think, you know, what I'm going to say I think is very powerful that a lot of people don't understand. I think that one of the main reasons why Christians have been so overly oppressed and, uh, you know, so overly oppressed um, in, in the Middle East the reason that I think that middle 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 Eastern Christianity is is on the decline and why it, it's so heavily oppressed and and wiped out is because you know Hakadosh Baruch Hu expects a lot more from the Christians in the Middle East who are rooted in the ancient in the in the in the true origins and roots of Christianity they're more rooted in that and so I think the benchmark is has been set extremely high for Christians in the Middle East. And Hakadosh Baruch Hu expects a lot from Christians in the Middle East. And I think that Christians in the Middle East to a large extent have failed um, meeting that benchmark and meeting the expectations of, of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. And as a result of that, that's why Adonai has meted out very horrible judgment against Christians in the Middle East. It's because they, they didn't measure up. Would you agree with that statement, Mikhail? Or, because that's, that's my understanding, you know? Uh, uh, I can say yes to that, but I, I look at, at it from a different angle, you know. Uh, uh, to get really pure, you have to get uh, heavy fire, you know. Uh, uh, as long as we are under oppression, or, or uh, as long as my fathers and forefathers have been under oppression, their faith and their uh, commitment to Christianity and to spirituality uh, have uh, grown tremendously. Uh, I first learned the faith from my father and from my mother. Uh, uh, my grandfathers were all uh, simple men and simple women, but uh, they didn't uh, own anything except the faith they gave me. They didn't understand it much, but uh, they gave it to me and they hoped that someday I will understand it more. And that's what I'm trying to do now. Uh, yes, we're oppressed because we did not, did not measure up, but uh, uh, as the Israelis and the Israelites uh, in older times under Pharaoh thrived and blossomed, uh, under oppression, 
uh, we just did the same th the same thing, you know. Uh, uh, so uh, that's my answer. Well, Baruch Hashem, you know, for all of that. And uh, I guess the next question, uh, you know, I wanted to ask you. Um, so I'll give you an example, right? So, you know, as you said, you know, there are many Christians that, you know, think that we're crazy, we're very heretical because we're very deep in, 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 in Gnosticism and the Kabbalah, etc. I guess, you know, yes. how do you, how do you deal with that? And and how do you attempt to bridge that gap? Uh, first, I smile, a very wise smile, you know. Uh, <laughs> okay. But uh, <laughs> uh, 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 I just uh, try to write and to make videos. Uh, the ones that are interested and the ones uh, that see a real thing in what I'm talking about, they reach out and I try to give them some resources that I had, uh, try to guide them to where to start and so. Uh, uh, that's it, you know, uh, I'm just uh, continuing the path and uh, Hashem is with me all the time, you know. I see so, him all the time. So here, here's a question, right? So let's say uh, you meet somebody like my wife, okay, <laughs> who, who is very, anti, who, who, who is very, she, she's very anti kabbalah She thinks it's heretical. She thinks it's wrong, right? Let's say you had five to ten minutes, right? Let's say you have five to ten minutes to speak to her. What are some things that you would say, right? What are some things that you would say to somebody like my wife in five to ten minutes? that you think would help to open their eyes to the truth of the Kabbalah? Okay, I will tell her what do you know about baptism, you know? Uh, baptism is a core uh, sacrament and mystery in Christianity, and uh, it's in there in the New Testament. Uh, a lot of people doesn't, doesn't know that uh, it's rooted in the teaching of the Megva, uh, uh, but uh, uh, we can talk about uh, baptism. It's all over the place in the New Testament. Uh, but uh, I don't think and I didn't m met anyone who have uh, full knowledge of baptism. So uh, I would ask her what, uh, what do she know about baptism? Uh, and we continue from there. Okay, well, let's 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 say that she's, you know, she's like a Messianic Jew, so she's like, okay, well, yeah, I know, I know it comes from Judaism, I know it comes from the mikvah, I know that. Okay, so what else? What else would you say then? She knows that, she gets that, but how would you then, you know, get into the Kabbalah and open her eyes more? Uh, I, I, I lost you for a second here. Yeah, so I said, so you know, she's like a Messianic Jew, right? So she would she would tell you, like, she would say, listen, I, I, you know, I know that that the baptism comes from Judaism, I know it comes from the mikvah. Um, so, you know, she gets those basic points. So understanding okay. those basic points, what would you then tell her to open her eyes more and, and have her see the truth of the Kabbalah? Okay. Uh, I would say that uh, the New Testament uh, explained uh, at least two points in depth about uh, the baptism that uh, can't be understood if you are just an ordinary Messianic Jew or even an Orthodox Jew. Uh, that that's taught about the mikvah. Uh, first of all, uh, baptism is about creation, not just cleansing. Uh, uh, Saint Peter uh, Kepha said that uh, the baptism is basically uh, a turn down uh, uh, to uh, Uza and Azazel uh, and their mob. You know. Uh, Christ, uh, after he did, uh, after he died, sorry, uh, went uh, to Gehinom and met with them and told them basically like uh, Enoch did, that God have uh, God has uh, uh, claimed a punishment upon them and uh, that the work of Christ uh, is basically to release all who believe from uh, uh, under their rule and their oppression. Uh, uh, that's what happened exactly with water. You know, uh, water covered the earth, the whole earth, and just Noah and his family survived. Uh, we as Christians, or uh, basically as Orthodox Christians, believe that when we're going into the water, we are dead just like Christ, 
and we make a statement to those uh, mob, or those fallen angels, that we're going to uh, get out like Noah did in the flood. And uh, we're now are not under their uh, oppression and their sinful acting. Uh, that's a first. Uh, the second thing is, uh, it's really uh, about creating a new person. Uh, uh, a baptized Christian, uh, uh, a, a baptized Christian should be really like a small Jesus or a small Mashiach. Uh, uh, I didn't hear any Western Christian say that. Uh, how how a Christian is uh, becoming a Mashiach? Uh, he he goes underwater. He's dead like Mashiach, and when he rises from the water. Uh, the Spirit of God or the Holy Spirit or Ruach Elohim or uh, Ruach HaKodesh uh, abides in him uh, and basically creates him anew. Uh, uh, in our tradition, uh, the baptized get into the water three times and when he is out of the water, the priest basically stamps his body with uh, uh, 36 crosses. You know, you're a Kabbalist and you know that uh, 36 is a very uh, significant number. Uh, it's basically we're going into the water and we are coming out uh, acting uh, the what the Zohar said about me, bara, ele. You know, we are in the water, in the yam. Uh, yam is the reverse of me or the symbol of me, the abarbina. Uh, and we're getting out of that and uh, receiving our uh, 36 uh, stems of, uh, or uh, 36 crosses, that's Elay. Uh, so we are getting created out anew. Uh, that's basically Kabbalah 101 to anyone who really understands uh, and studies Kabbalah. Wow, you just... You uh, just is that just, pretty clear? You, you just blew me away, uh, Mikhail. You just absolutely freaking blew me away. Um, kind of see if maybe we can we can get you to talk to my wife <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, so you sure is there anything that you want to um, uh, ask or, or or say yeah so um, you guys can hear me clear right all right so yes basically what I would say um, in terms of understanding the the Kabbalah a little bit more is that the Kabbalah is the real oral Torah. So we have a lot of Messianic Jews who study Judaism and they read about the oral Torah and the written Torah, right? We know the written Torah is the Torah itself and the oral Torah is all the, basically the commentary, the explanation. So the original word, the original word for oral Torah was actually Kabbalah. So the, the way you checkmate that with anyone is if you're even talking about the Bible, you're dealing with some aspect of Kabbalah such as baptism, such as the mikvah. The mikvah is kind of like Mem, like Moshe. Moshe was drawn out of the water. So you see all of these different connect, and you spell Moshe backwards, you get Hashem, right, who came down on a cloud, which is made out of water. So you have all these different connections in the Bible, and when you show someone the word, the actual word of God, so you see the picture before you, uh, I'm not sure if it's, if it's really visible, but we even see in different languages, like the name of Hashem in Hebrew, if you flip it upside down, you actually get the name of Allah, just base point with the spelling. That's one example of Kabbalah. Kabbalah is the unifying factor, um, and really as a Christian, as a real a Christed being, if you're Christed, if you know what Christ, to, to be crystallized, Christed means, it means to basically allow all the channels of the Most High, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, into your being through different meditations and through different practices. And, you know, if you're a Kabbalist, if you're a Coptic Christian, um, you know, if, if you know, especially in the higher level bloodlines, we all know this. Um, and so what we're doing, this is the original religion. And so really, I would call anyone who puts down Kabbalah to be a real heretic, right? Um, and once you kind of give them that scenario where they understand that they're committing great heresy by separating the Kabbalah from the scriptures, at that point, they might be able to behold, um, they might be able to behold exactly why there's so much separation in our, in our, in our, in our lives today. And um, yeah, I really wasn't passed on any religion or any belief system. I kind of just had to go and explore everything and see how it made sense. Um, but I do know that a real Christian is someone who believes in the, in the, in the crucifixion and the amplification 
of the of, of, of the Christ really of the Shekhinah and um, in order to do that you it, there's nothing physically that you can possibly do there's no there's you can't commit 1,000 years of good deeds for Hashem in order for him to admit you into any type of paradise it's impossible because Hashem's mercy outweighs those 1,000 actually even if you work for Hashem for a million years straight and you come up to paradise you come before the courts and then you say, and then Hashem's like, okay, this individual, let's just say we're talking about Chief or Mikhail here. This individual, I want you to send him to paradise based on my mercy. Based on my mercy, Hashem says. And so Chief or Michael might say, hold on a second, I go to Baruch Hu. I was serving you for 10,000 years. I davened seven times a day. I wrapped my tefillin. I learned the whole Kabbalah. I taught so many Jews. I don't want to get in by your mercy, Hashem. I want to get in because of my actions i want to get him because of my own hands this is the same arrogant attitude the christians have or the jews have or the muslims have and what does hashem say he says okay no problem so he goes to satan he says satan bring me the scales over here i want you to put his ten thousand years of work and service towards me on one side and on the other side i want you to put my blessing i gave to him to see with his eyes on the other side i want you to put the blessing i gave to him just to hear with his ears on the other side, I want you to put the blessing to understand what is heart, okay? And I want you to and I want you to see how Allah's mercy drops the scale. It completely drops the scale with your ten thousand years of work. It completely drops the scale. And so Allah and so Hashem Allah says, take this individual and throw him into the fires of Yehunim. Arrogant, selfish, and egoistic. He can't even accept my mercy. And so the man, you know, obviously it's not going to be your Michael because you guys know better. But this is just an example for the viewers. A man says, oh my God, no, Hashem, no, you know what, I'll take it based on your mercy. So take it based on the mercy that the Kabbalah is all over the place in the world today. Take it on Hashem's mercy that we have the whole internet to research anything we want today without getting persecuted. That's Hashem's mercy. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I mean, what happens when there's real compassion, but before compassion, there's always judgment. And that judgment, the only judgment that you can ever take in your life against Hashem, is to separate his Kabbalah from his Torah. And I think I'll just finish off there. Okay, let me tell you a thing, Yeshua. You know, uh, you said uh, people work to go to heaven or paradise or so. Uh, when I first studied Kabbalah, I really, really understood that there is no paradise or heaven uh, or even Gehinom, the way we understand there is, you know, Amen. God Amen. is paradise, God is heaven. Uh, when you turn your back to God, that's Gehinom. Uh, right. You know, uh, there are not places. There are not places. God is old. God is Ahaz, you know. Uh, so God is paradise. You you got to see God. Not, not a place, uh, not some... Uh, uh, a very luxurious kind of place out there uh, so you work hard to get it uh, it's not the case it's always grace you know uh, right. the New Testament is all about grace grace you know uh, uh, works are uh, are about keeping that grace from getting away it's not about earning it it's about guarding it so uh, you guard it you get God all the way you don't guard it, uh, you turn your back to God and basically you turn to hell and into hell. Right, right. So, you know, this so is a, this you, is a uh, great, great Lurianic teaching. Um, I just wanted to say because we know we go on par with the Arazal constantly saying, constantly alluding to the fact that the mitzvah itself is the actual paradise and the Gehinom itself is the actual sin. Go ahead, Chief. I just wanted to. So I think I think I think the most proper uh, way to explain what Mikhail is trying to say, because I think this is this is a, a a very subtle technicality that needs to be properly explained. So we ask in the very esoteric Kabbalah, what is what is a place, and what is space? Uh -oh. What is space? How do we define space? How do we define a place, right? Well, the answer that is given in the very, very esoteric Kabbalah, only known among the Holy Illuminati, is that space, a place in of itself, actually is a state of consciousness. 
So when we speak about the sphere, let's say we're talking about the sphere of Chesed or Gibura, right? That sphere quintessentially is a state of consciousness. It's a level of consciousness, but we understand very esoterically and telestically that that state and level of consciousness in of itself uh, is a place. Now, this is indicated um, in the secret signs of Gematria because if you uh, take the word, the Hebrew word um, makom, uh, and uh, you, uh, if you, if if you, squ I think if you square the name Elohim, you get the word makom. I can't remember the exact equation. Um, what is the Gematria of makom? It's. Uh, do you any of you remember what it is? Uh, Gematria of makom is. Uh, 140, Makom, 180, 186, and then I can't remember the exact equation, but there's an equation in the Kabbalah that 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 equates um, the word. I think it's the word uh, the Tetragrammaton or Elohim to Makom. If you square either of those words, you get an equation. Okay, so that in of itself, and I'll have to look up that equation later, and maybe I'll post a comment revealing it um, when the video is uploaded, but. That, sh that if you understand that esoteric mystical equation, you can see there's an equation between the word makom and the word Elohim. Okay, again, proving that really locality, quintessentially locality, quintessentially, especially in the higher universes, is a state of consciousness, so to speak. And I think that's what Michal, you know, was attempting to explain. Um, now, I also want to add, uh, well, after, you know, I first want to say, Bisma Rabbi Al Almin Al Alhamdulillah, this picture that we're showing is very powerful because, you know, it, it goes back to what I'm always saying, what I'm so famously known as always saying, everything is interconnected. In fact, everything is interconnected beyond anything anyone can possibly ever fathom or imagine, right? You take the letters, the holy letters of the Tetragrammaton, you, you you unite them. You unite the letters of the Tetragrammaton, which in of itself is a Yehud, okay? That Yehud turned upside down is Allah. A'udhu billahi minay shaytani rajim bismillah rahman rahim Alhamdulillah rabbi alameen Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Maalik Yom Mitdin, Amin, Amin. Hey, Baruch Shem, Baruch Shem, Kibbutz Makbudol Lamboy. Mikhail, what do you think about me and Yeshua's Arabic? Is it pretty good or bad? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, seriously, it's a great question. Yeah, <laughs> on a scale from one to ten, uh, it's about eight. Really? No. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. Very, very great for an American, you know. Uh, I think uh, Hebrew and Aramaic help help them a lot. Amen. Uh, Amen. Amen. Wow, it's amazing. I'm so happy to hear that. Baruch Hashem, Alhamdulillah. 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 Amin. Baruch Hashem, Alhamdulillah. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. So, Mikhail, I want to sleep. I want to give you the floor. Is there anything um, that, you know, you want to further add or, you know, or reveal, you know, um, you know, to, to our listeners? I, I'll give you the floor right now. If there's anything you want to, anything you want to teach, reveal, say, you know, feel free right now to, to speak. Uh, yes, yes uh, uh, it's about the Eucharist, uh, the sacrament of Eucharist. Uh, basically, in my tradition, uh, the Eucharist have uh, two main uh, esoteric level, levels to it. Uh, it's not about uh, just uh, Hametz or Madza or, or, or that teaching, you know. Uh, uh, but uh, first of all, I want to say uh, an equation. Uh, what is a, a matzah? If you can, uh, if you can uh, explain more. Well, I mean, I would define matzah as unleavened bread. It's it's what's known yeah. as poor bread. And if you go if you go into the Kabbalah, right? The, the Kabbalah it reveals many holy mysteries about matzah, right? And and one of the I think one of the most highest, most powerful equations is that it equates matzah with with Shechina, the holy goddess, you know, Baruch okay. Hi. So that I mean, I could go on for a long time, but there's there's a few things, hopefully, you know, to answer your question to get you started, you know. Okay, what I want to say here is uh, matzah is the gematria of 135. 
uh, that's the same gematria of Sulam or Elader. Uh, and as I explained in my uh, previous videos, uh, uh, Elader or Sulam is basically uh, Katariel, Sandalphone, and Metatron. It's basically uh, the whole uh, tree of life or uh, the whole uh, energetic scale, if you, if you would like to say. Uh, and if you add uh, three for every letter, uh, that will give you the gematria of Khametz, or the leaven bread. Uh, our tradition uses leaven, leaven bread, not unleavened bread, to do Eucharist. So uh, the first thing about Eucharist, it's not just a symbol, it's not just a bread of love or a brotherly bread. Uh, the very word itself is about uh, containing the whole sephirotic energy, you know, the whole ladder or the whole scale. Uh, we, we, we do... Okay? You hear me? Yeah, um, that, okay. that is just, that, that is ridiculously, just absolutely ridiculously and very powerful what you just revealed. Absolutely mind-blowing, and, and thank you for that revelation. It was absolutely mind-blowing, you know, um, just quite speechless, uh, you know, as to that revelation. So thank, thank you so much for sharing that. Toda Raba for sharing that, Michael. Uh, thank you. Uh, can I continue? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Uh, the first thing we do with uh, the bread uh, after that revelation, you know, uh, we invoke Jesus. Uh, to come and shine with his holy divine face upon the bread so it can be turned into a bread of faces. You know, they tell, they totally ruin it when they say the shoe bread or something like that. It's not just a thumb, something to chew upon. It's a bread with a face. The whole energetic body of the tree of life or the whole Sephirot is how God manifests in the world. Uh, and that whole uh, energy, that whole light uh, that emanates from Ein Sof comes down through Jesus on the bread. You know, that's a first thing. The second thing is about uh, equating the bread uh, with the uh, Holy Word, you know, the Word of God is our bread so uh, we read the word of god uh, during the mass uh, and uh, excuse me here my dog is barking it, 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 do you get that or it just uh, yeah it's okay we can, we, can, uh, we can hear you no you can continue okay uh, so uh, the second thing we uh, do with the bread that we read uh, the Word of God, uh, we read from the Old Testament and from the New Testament, and we pray the same exact words that we pray uh, on the bread to, uh, we pray them uh, on the, uh, or during the uh, reading of the Holy Word. So uh, the second thing is we believe and we think that the Logos which is again the whole sephirotic energy or the whole scale uh, comes down on uh, the bread and uh, fills it completely. Uh, the third thing is we invoke the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit or uh, Ruach Elohim or Ruach HaKodesh is not just a state of mind, what we call uh, a, a prophecy or a prophet. Uh, it's a living, sentient being. So we invoke the Spirit of God to come upon the bread uh, and fill it completely. So basically when you are taking the bread or participating uh, in the Holy Eucharist, you are participating of God himself. God's energy and God's self fills all uh, the bread completely. So when someone say, it's just a symbol, it's not the body of Christ, it's not the body like in uh, 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 if you take it and put it under a microscope, you will find uh, cells and blood and, uh, and such and such. No, uh, it's his body uh, in the sense that the, the sephirotic energy 
of Jesus and uh, of the whole ladder, uh, the whole scale, is wrapped into uh, the bread as a vessel. So uh, the bread is, is basically uh, a kili uh, or a clay that contains the spherot. So it's really the body. It's really the body. It's not a symbol. It's not uh, just uh, a tahin, you know, a tahini. No, it's, it's the body. It's the vessel containing the whole energy or the whole energetic body uh, of Jesus and of the spherot, you know. Uh, it's a thing uh, that Western Christianity, especially Protestantism and Messianic Judaism, is totally oblivious to. So uh, they lack a lot, you know. Uh, yeah, they need you're, you're, uh, you're, to get exposed. You're, you're, to. You're, 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 as you know, you're you're absolutely right, Mikhail. That's what I'm. That's what I'm always preaching uh, and teaching. Um, and again, I have to say this: this is why. Um, I, as a chief magician of Mr. Babylon, can properly go on record as stating that you, Michael, are a true master of Israel, that you know these holy mysteries. What you have done here is you have literally revealed one of the highest of arcana, one of the highest of holy mysteries uh, 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 of Yeshua HaMashiach and the holy rituals that he passed down to his chief disciples and to his children. and. What is this? Quintessentially, quintessentially, this is holy magic. This is holy. This is what I'm always talking about. This is the quintessence of what true holy magic is, which is you are channeling the Sephirothic energies to possess you, right? This is a spiritual body that you are channeling and the the goal of the magus the goal of the the magician the holy magician is to become possessed by this holy spiritual astral body and these holy energies uh ridiculously powerful what you were revealing um michael app just it's off the charts just off the freaking charts i'm speechless Thank you. Uh, I, I thought the, the world, uh, especially uh, those Western Christians uh, who are my brothers and sisters after all, uh, uh, they can call me a heretic or, uh, uh, or a pagan, you know, uh, Jewish, uh, Messianic Jews uh, calls me uh, uh, or call me uh, a pagan sometimes, uh, which I'm not, cert certainly I'm not. Uh, I follow the most ancient ways and teachings uh, that came through Jesus Christ and his uh, divine apostles. Uh, uh, in, cost, in contrast, you know, to those who does not follow that or uh, does not understand that uh, uh, to the full extent. Yeah, uh, you're absolutely right, and and you know this is why you know I had to take uh, this is why I took an extremely aggressive, a ridiculously aggressive method of operation and stance on my holy channel. Why I was always screaming and yelling and, and using curse words, you know, because it's the most I can do, right? I'm I'm not gonna kill you, I'm not gonna spank you, right? I can't do any of that. The most I can do to wake these these ignoramuses up. Is to scream and to yell and to curse. That's, that's the most I can do. So that's what I'm doing. And you know, there are holy saints like you, Michal, that that understand my method of operation. But the profane and the uninitiated don't understand that method of operation. Even how holy that method of operation can be. So, yes, a uh, divine hesed wrapped in a divine givura, if you can say. Indeed, amen. Uh, anything you want to add, Yeshua? Oh yeah, well, I mean, back back way back when, I mean, thousands of years ago, you had, you think Chief was tough? You should have went into House Shemai, Beit Shemai, Chief. You should tell them, like, yeah, it, got, it got <laughs> fucking, it got fucking. Chief just like Chief was like, I'm not gonna spank you or kill you. Yeah, really? They would have like a thousand Talmidim from Beit Talel, who was more of a side of Chesed, and then they would have a thousand Talmidim on the side of Gibura, and they'd all come out. 
in this in in the open day to discuss Talmud and Torah and Mishnah really because Talmud wasn't around that back back then, and they're discussing Mishnah, and one of the Shem, one of the Shemai rabbis gets pissed. Oh yeah, really? Yeah, this is what you think? You stupid Jew? Boom, he's he's dead. The Jew's dead. They gotta carry him. Out. <laughs> the Jews gotta carry him out. So it's it's you know I just wanted to add that <clears throat> because um you know today we would be considered um we'd be considered a uh, wussies. So I'll just use that word here. We we'll, we were considered big wussies. We we're considered big um big cowards. You know what? That's a better word. Cowards, and we're not brave, and we're not free. And this is exactly why I feel like Hakadosh Baruch Hu is pissed. So um, with those level of mysteries from Yeshua. Uh, you know, regarding the uh, the thirteenth of the twelfth and, and all that all that wonderful stuff. Yeah, we need more of that type of those mysteries mm -hmm. because if we're gonna stay within the religious box, um, you know, we're gonna self destruct. All of us. No one's leaving. Um and, and, and that's a promise, right? So um I think that these type of mysteries are really important to be revealed and you know, Mika, I just wanna say, you know, you did a great job and you really inspired me, you know, I, mean, I just feel really humbled to be before two masters and uh, I just want to say thank you guys for uh, for sharing these insights. They're really meaningful to me. Yeah, and uh, I also want to add that, um, you know, we're going to post the link in the description to M Mikael. Mikael, he has a, he has a channel um, as well on YouTube where he posts a lot of his revelations and teachings. Um, uh, not a lot of views, unfortunately, on his videos, and they're very super, very, very advanced, very esoteric uh, teachings he has on his channel. Um, so uh, we're going to post a link uh, to that in the description, so anyone who's interested can go and visit his channel and check out his very esoteric mystical teachings, which I will tell you, I will tell you directly as a chief mystery in Mystery Babylon that they are of that, his teachings are of the highest order, no, no, you know, no joke. Um, so definitely recommend you serious saints who are listening to definitely check out his channel and his teachings there. Um, so I, I don't have anything further, um, so, you know, um, I, so I'm, I'm going to conclude by just simply saying Anohi Hartumaya de Babel Raz and uh, I leave it to Yeshua and Michael if they want to say the last word. Um, yes, Anohi uh, Hurnatash well, Lasiprata. The harmony of the spheres and um i hope that you all viewers beloved viewers enjoyed the presentation amen and uh billahi shaitan amen and mikhail leave it up to you brother yes i would repeat uh, your words A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim And I will repeat the Shema Shema Yisrael Yuhay wahay Eloheinu Yuhay wahay Ehaz Baruch Shem Kivod Malkutho Le'ulam wa'id Amin Amin Thank you Shalom Wa Salaam Shalom Wa Rahmin